Let's go over quotes and why they're important. Quotes allow guests to follow the standard checkout process. Using the Onares quote acceptance process ensures that you get a signed rental agreement along with payment and security deposits being scheduled and automatic emails are sent and scheduled. We recommend that guests are directed to make their bookings this way either by sending them a quote or in response to an inquiry or they can use the book now widget on your hosted website or on your own website. Let's create a quote. To create a quote, you can click the create quote button under the bookings tab or you can click into the calendar and select the type to quote then click create quote. If we go to the quotes tab, here we see any of the quotes we created. We can see the property and name of the guest along with when they arrive and depart, the number of nights, adults, children, and pets. We also see the total and the status along with any tags we have assigned to this guest. If we want to create a quote, we'll go ahead and click create quote. Here we'll be asked which property we'd like to select. We'll select Bear Valley. Then we are asked which dates. We'll go ahead and select October 5th through the 8th. Next we'll add the party size. We'll make this two. And we'll leave the children and pets alone. Below you'll see you're given the breakdown for this quote. The guests will be charged 1,050 for three nights. And you can see that the rent was 900, the surcharges, such as the clean fee, was 100 per stay, and the tax was $50. All of these are based on your settings, and many different surcharge and tax settings are available. Now if we click Create Quote, we'll be asked to give further information, such as which guest we would like to assign this to. We'll go ahead and type in the guest name. Then below that, we'll be asked to enter the email address, phone number, and their address. If you don't have any of this, don't worry about that, because when they go to check out, they'll be asked for their point of contact, and once they fill that in, this will automatically be filled in as well. At the top, you'll see you also have a choice of when you want this quote to expire. Currently, we have this set to 10 days, but if we wanted the guest to have more time to respond to this quote, we can change this to say 15 days. Next, we'll scroll down to the bottom, and we can add any notes we'd like, and you can also add a tracking site if you'd like. We'll go ahead and leave this alone and click save. Now we'll see that the quote has been successfully created. You can go ahead and send this quote if you'd like, or if you need to change the charges beforehand, you can go up to this top bar and click charges, then click change and adjust these if need be. Along with the charges tab, we also have the overview tab. This gives you an overview of the entire quote. You see the total charge on the right side, you see the status, when it expires, property, party size, tags, and below that you see all the guest info that you currently have. Underneath that you see the dates that they'll be arriving and departing on, and any notes that you may have written. There's also a few buttons at the top here. You can send the quote if you're ready to do that. You can also directly convert this to a booking, and you can copy this quote to a new booking or a new quote. This leaves the current quote in place as an open quote but creates a duplicate quote or booking for the same property, dates, and guests. You can also just delete the quote. Under the Info tab, we'll see you can show the contact info, you can change the contact info, and if you need to switch guests, you can do that as well. You can also change the quote details by clicking this button, then changing the party size, children, pets, along with adding which listing site this was from, and you can adjust the expiration. Next we have the dates tab. Here you can see the arrival and departure date and you can change these if you'd like. Then we have the charges tab which we recently checked out. You can always click change and come in here and adjust the quote if need be. The rate column can be adjusted to be positive or negative. If we make this negative $100 we'll see that the total adjusts as well. You can also make this a percentage. If you wanted this to be 10%, we'll see that the tax line and total has adjusted. You can also write whatever you want in these boxes. This will default to whatever you have set for the surcharge, discount, taxes, or rent that you have set up in your settings. But if you want to change this just to say three nights, you can do that and click save. And if you want to reset everything to property rates, you can click reset property rates. Then click OK. 
and now we see it's back to the way it was. Now if we go to rules, these rules determine how the payment, security deposit, and other billing matters are handled by the quote, and these are set in your property rules. You can also click change if you'd like to adjust these, but just remember, changing the rules here will only adjust this quote. If you'd like to change the global rules, you need to do that in your property rules. Some of the things you may want to adjust are selecting which agreement you want them to sign, you can adjust the first payment amount, and you can change the pending and auto cancellation. You can also change the second payment due date, the security deposit, if you want to offer travel insurance, and which cancellation policy applies to this quote. Next you have the notes tab, which allows you to write any notes about this guest, then click save. You then have the send tab, and this is where you'll see what the guests will see when you send the quote to them. They'll be given a breakdown of the costs, then they can accept and finalize or view more details. The email shown is based on a pre-filled template which can be customized. Lastly, you have the payment form, which will open up what the guests will see. They'll be shown the quote details, the breakdown, they'll be asked if they want to purchase travel insurance, they'll be shown what to pay, and they'll be shown how to pay. If they don't want travel insurance, they can click update charges in total, which doesn't do anything because nothing was added. Then they can click looks good, finish booking. And here we see the guest is asked to fill out a point of contact form. The guest can add their home phone number, their cell phone number, their work phone. They also can enter their address and add the name and age of additional guests. I'll go ahead and fill this out as if I were the guest. Now that we have filled out the point of contact form, we can continue to the rental agreement. Here we see the guest is shown the renter agreement for Bear Valley. This is the default renter agreement, but you can always select a different one like we showed earlier. They can view the entire agreement, and when they're ready to sign, they can put their name here. Then they'll click I accept submit payment. Here they'll be asked to enter their card number, expiration date, and security code. We'll go ahead and enter a card number in here. Then we'll click continue to confirmation. Here we see the guest has shown a payment summary telling them that a payment of 1050 will be collected immediately and that a security deposit of 300 is due October 4th, which is one day before arrival. They're shown the billing details, then they're shown the quote details. Next they'll click confirm and finalize now. Now we see that the guest has shown that they are all done and the booking has been saved and paid for. Now if we go back to owner res, then click bookings, we'll see the quote that we had for Luke Hines has now turned into a booking and we can click in and see all the details for this guest. We also see that they have paid and if we go to legal we can see that they have signed the renter agreement. And If we go back to quotes, we'll see that the quote shows that the guest has booked and we can still click in and see this quote's information. If we try clicking on the tabs, like the charges tab, we'll see that we can no longer edit this because it is now turned into a booking. And if we click on the payment form, we'll see that it doesn't let the guests go to that form anymore because the quote was accepted and the form is no longer available. If we go back to quotes, we'll see there's also a filter button. When this list inevitably gets longer and longer, you'll want to filter out the quotes. When you click this button, you're given the option to filter by property, name, when they arrive or depart, the amount of adults, children, pets, the total, the status, any tags you may have applied. You can choose to filter by has an email address and you can select yes or no. You can also enter a specific email address, phone number, or address. You can also export this quote list into an Excel file if you'd like. You can also use the top search bar to search for quotes based off of the name, quote number, email address, or other guest booking info. One last thing, the reason why you want to use quotes instead of a booking is because if we go over to our bookings tab, then select this booking, which was not a quote initially and we just added it as a booking. We'll see the guest has not paid, we do not have their point of contact besides their email address, and they have not signed the legal agreement. 
Creating a quote and sending it out to a guest accomplishes all of this. This is why we always recommend creating a quote instead of just creating a booking. It's also important to note, when you use our widgets or our hosted website for direct bookings, those processes will create quotes automatically to walk guests through booking. Those are automatic quotes as opposed to manual quotes like we did in this video. That is an overview on quotes and ONRES.